Once again, we want to praise God for giving us one more time to seek his blessing today because that is the reason why we are alive to seek of his face and blessing and that we may regain the sight to walk in this dark world of ours that we live in this time. I want to invite you to a session of prayer as we conclude this very specially organized 10 days of prayer that we may share together in the blessings the Lord has stored for us. I want to invite those leaders who are in charge of the microphones to keep one microphone here. Uh, there are several of them, I saw them, and uh, one should be around there, up there. Someone should see the microphone there. And maybe another one around there for God's people to participate in session of prayer. I think another one should go to the other um, site. Maybe another one to come close nearby here so that the people of God can participate in the blessing of the united prayer network that the church has arranged for us to fellowship together. For those who have been following us online and uh, a few of us who have been coming here physically, and I'm told many of uh, the members here with the BC Seduce, they decided intentionally to do it from their homes. And for sure, many of you are watching online because of the nature of this place where your judge is. So I want us to do a session of prayer willingly, even as we celebrate the blessing of the Lord that we have shared in the whole week. And before we do that, I wish for those who did fellowship in these 10 days of prayer, because I may now do all the summary, to raise up their hands here, just from this part of our the, the auditorium church how many of you who followed us online from this side raise up your hands because I saw you, you raise the hands thank you my brother come 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 and uh, take all of the mic then you lead us in prayer as we uh, be guided just right here for a while you sit. And maybe from that corner over there, how many of us, because I'm seeing the hands being reduced, when now I'm saying that I want to people who participated, and I'm going to choose them as the Spirit may lead, because I did not promise you to do it. I only want to know the prerequisite that is mandatory for you to pray and seek God's blessings on behalf of the ch this church and on behalf of all of us and connect us to the prayer line worldwide that is going on today as we finish our prayer, uh, 10 days of prayer, you will be a participant in this. So from that corner over there, how many of you participated? All from here upwards. Thank you so much. The willingness of heart is even... The, the physical uh, body speaks of the willingness from the heart. Come here, my brother. I'm not seeing any lady, and there were several ladies following us online. Anyway, men are the priests that have been appointed to, 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 to pray for the families. But I want to say, even ladies, you're also welcome. Anyone from here? From here, this front. Uh, oh, no, 
If you don't get tired doing good, you do. My dear, yes, you can. Give her the mic. Give, her the, give him the mic and let him be seated somewhere there. Come sit where I was seated, my, 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 my brother here with my sister. And um, right here, those who participated, I want to see young people involve, involving themselves come over. So we, we, we have also received the blessing of uh, uh, another priest of uh, uh, some particular family to come and represent us. Okay, come to this side. We want to do uh, prayer today because that is what it is here. From here, right to the back of this side here, someone who participated and feels and moved, is moved that they can do a prayer in connecting us uh, uh, in this World Church Session of Prayer uh, moment. So, I want to presume that no one attended here. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. God knows that you attended except the, 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 the influence of the one who does not want you to utter a prayer because you may not be strong. Come over, ma'am. You may not be strong, but the Lord could want to hear you whisper and mumble prayers that he can put right before his presence. And from that side down to here, then especially for this group. Over there, you make use of uh, uh, the time we have. Don't mishandle the time we have been given. It's a gift. So when you keep quiet, that means uh, we have come to worship or what? It's a requirement that we participate, all of us. That corner down? No lady, no man attended? How many attended from that corner? Online. All right. This side, how many of you attended? Or either online or physical? If anyone you did attend, all these, all these are men, okay? Come. Come, my brother, come. You are stretching yourself, huh? Okay. <laughs> can I juice? Because I, I can connect and juice. Come, come, come. Come, my sister, this other one. The younger one, yes. I request all of you to come over, those who uh, have been appointed to, to participate in this session. We have two ladies and three men who are going to participate in this prayer network uh, in uplifting praise and uh, as applications and conversions in unison with the entire world church in concluding our 10 days of prayer. What I want you to do, each one of you, is to thank God for the 10, 10 days of prayer and the way he has spoken to us. Whatever he spoke to you, representatively speak it out before the presence of the Lord and before his presence. And in conversion, brief, thank God for this moment Converse our sins and the sins of our church. Thank him for what he has done through Jesus Christ. And praise him for having connected us back to the altar. That is all we've been doing here. The focus is 
back to the altar. And uh, each one of you should do it even when I request you to do a posture that is well uh, accepted of you and you, when you, you feel comfortable so that we, we can speak to our Lord. And for those who do not have an opportunity to attend, I think we can by faith join in prayer by confessing, thanking God for your life, even when you are sick, even when you have challenges, simply thank God because he knows why you are in that kind of a situation. Our Lord is faithful. When we are in prayer, we need necessarily to not pray that we be delivered. We pray that the will of God may be revealed in our lives. So as our human nature teaches us and instructs us, sometimes we want to demand the Lord to answer our prayers. There and then when we prayed, our Lord is faithful. He wants us to pray in faith that he knows what is good for us. The Bible says in the book of uh, um, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that my people who are called by my name, and I know we have been called, all of us, beginning from the church and the entire world in Christ Jesus, our faith in him makes us be branded as children, daughters and sons, of God. So when we know about who called us as a church, we have an obligation to surrender and commit ourselves to him in supplication, in praise, in adoration, in thanksgiving, and in surrender of our sinful ways and saying, Lord, I am weak, yet I know you are strong in me. Forgive me and restore me. That is the prayer that rewards, brings rewards among us God's people and among us people who are called by his name. Prayers that are done simply to satisfy an occasion and maybe to celebrate Sabbath, celebrate the joy of meeting together, should go a little bit to some sort of seriousness and an encounter with God in meeting with him by asking yourself, who are you in relationship with him? So today, as we realize and know who we are, the law, we have an obligation, a responsibility, and a duty to seek of his face by submitting ourselves and conversing ourselves at his feet that the Lord may speak to us today. And not only speak to us, but also connect us with him in that speech that he is speaking to us from his word. So maybe I will request you to kneel down, short prayer, specific to the point that the Lord spoke to you. I know the Lord spoke to you, isn't it? That thing that you know that he spoke to you. So on behalf of the church, you represent by thanking him for what he spoke to you and what you heard from his word. And I will finish even as we begin from this side. and pray. Let's pray. We worship you, we glorify you, we magnify you, almighty God. You are Lord and King of the universe. We praise and bless your name, for without you we could not be here. We are grateful, my Father, for seeing us through these ten days of prayers and bringing us back to the altars. For, bringing us, for helping us, O oh Father, to be able to set up the broken altars even in our homes, my Father. For leading us and guiding us in the way we can go and get access to your altars. We thank you for ministering to us in such a powerful way, my Father, and for touching our lives and for changing us, O oh God, from what we had before and from what you have presented to us. We commit our lives, we rededicate our lives into your hands and pray that even as we set into this year, may you reign supreme in our lives and in everything that we do, O oh God. 
May we take you, O oh God, at your word. And may you guide us throughout the year, even to remain at the altar as we present ourselves to you. Minister to all of us and revive us again in your ways. Is our humble prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. God, thank you so much this morning for such a precious time that you have brought us to your presence to worship you. You are our Abba Father. We cry unto you. We speak unto you because you listen to us. This week, you have spoken to us in many ways through 10 days of prayer. You've spoken to us that there is a need for us to come back to your altars. In the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 9, you spoke to us concerning our hearts and you told us that we need to watch uh, our hearts with diligence. The things we, we think, what we say, and what we do should be in accordance to your will. So that at the end of the day, God, you are the one who is going to be given honor and glory. You also spoke to us through the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 1 to 8, the way you appeared to your servant. You revived him through a, a wake-up call, and Isaiah preached your word, and many people were saved. And you also spoke to us concerning empowering us through the altars. In our nature, God, we may come to your presence, but if your spirit is not, is not in us, we cannot be able to offer the right worship. So you spoke to us through the altars that through your Holy Spirit, you're going to give us power to do your work because our church is a church of mission-oriented. And for us to be able to convert the hearts of many people, we need your reviving power through the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, God, for these wonderful days that you, you blessed us to come before your presence. You gave us your protection, and we have come to an end of this excursion with peace, and nothing has ever distracted this excursion. This is my prayer, because we pray, believing, and trusting in Jesus' name. Together with what my brother and my sisters prayed, Father, we kneel before your presence this wonderful Sabbath morning to give glory and honor to you. For God, you are a God worth our worship, Father. Thank you for the 10 days of prayer that we have had in the Worldwide Church. And thank you from even the CKC, we have been having the same sessions, Father. Thank you for this mechanism that you have put in place that we needed to go back to your altar, Father. Father, forgive us because we have not been able to erect altars in our places of work, in our homes. And Father, this is why we are seeing what is happening worldwide, Father. There is cry. Your children are crying, Father. How I pray that, Father, we are so desperate, even your disciples were so desperate and afraid when the Savior was nailed on the cross. But Father, thank you because Jesus Christ rose for us. And he told us he will not leave us destitute, Father. You will give us a comforter. We are here. We ask for your divine intervention that you give us the Holy Spirit that will strengthen us and rekindle us, Father, so that we can go back to the, trace our paths to the altar, Father. That is where we can find salvation. Thank you for the gift of leadership of this church. Thank you for the pastor who has been breaking the bread of life. Father, help us that we can be revived once again. Help us that we can revive together with our families. And help us that we can revive wherever we are, wherever we present you appropriately, Father. We have washed down your doctrines and we are just bringing the world to the church. Have mercy on us. May your will be done, Father, that we cannot end the 10 days of prayer without implementing what we have been instructed by your holy messages that we have been receiving. Have mass on us and continue guiding us until you come again for us. In Jesus', in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thy heavenly Father, we come to the throne of thy grace this Sabbath morning. 
We thank you for the 10 days of prayers that you have been able to remind us that we need to set our altars at home even before we come to church. You also reminded us, Father, that the heart is so deceitful above all things, you are the only one who knows it. Whereas we want to commit, you also reminded us that we should commit ourselves to the throne of the grace so that we can be able to direct our path because you know what is best for us. Father, you reminded us of the need of um, evangelism. You reminded us of the medical missionaries' work. You reminded us of the chaplaincy programs in schools, in hospitals, and their surroundings, that, Father, we may be able to proclaim your word when there's still time. We reminded us of many things that we needed to put God first in everything that we do, and it was a, a very um, encouraging message to each and every one of us. You reminded us that we need to read your word and pray all the time that we may be able to get strength. Father, we want to confess our sins that, Father, we have not lived in accordance to thy will. How we commit ourselves as an individual, as a church, that, Father, you may be able to, you will be able to revive us, to be able to do things that will glorify your name. We want to commit ourselves this morning into thy presence. May you take control of our life, take control of our faculties, direct our path and our ways. Give us the opportunity to be able to realize that we are seen as who needs your grace and come to the throne of thy grace because as you have told us in the book of First John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, that if you confess our sins and repent, you are just and faithful to forgive us if there's still time. Father, give us the opportunity not to take that promise that is very sure for granted. When we still have the opportunity and the chance, uh, give us the opportunity to reflect on our life and evaluate whether we have worked well with thee. We want to commit ourselves as a church that, Father, you may be able to direct our path, that you may be able to take your work seriously, that as we come back to the altar, we'll be able to be first revived as individuals before we are revived collectively as a church. We want to thank you for the privilege of being in your presence and for the privilege of worshiping this day because you are our God and our Redeemer. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to participate in the 10 days of prayers. We want to thank you for the opportunity that you have allowed us back to uh, come back to the altar because of your mercies and your grace. We still commit ourselves that you continue guiding us through this day. Father, we want to commit each and every prayer request that has been lifted up with the throne of thy grace. May you intervene in a very special way. What we have been asking, Father, we want to commit them. May it be in accordance to thy will. Whatever that we might not have asked, Father, and we think we need to do it, may you intercede on our behalf. We thank you for listening to our prayer. We thank you for answering in accordance to thy will. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Takatifu mungu ishe mali pa chupa takatifu. Tunakucha mbele sako wa tukikushukuru. Tunalimidi china lako wa tukisema asande kwa sababu we mweza kutulinda kwa wiki nzima tumweza kukutana pia papa tulipofungua sapato yako ya chana. Tunakushukuru papa kwa sababu umetuesesha tumweza kukutana. Tunakushukuru kwa siku kumi ya maombi ambao uliweza kutenga kwa achili ya watu wako. Ili papa tuweze kukumbaka ya kwamba tuko mie tuko masiku ambayo papa imeweza kuyoyoma inastahili tuche mbele yako kila na wakati asante mungu kwa mafundisho ambayo tuliweza kupata kwa wale ambao waliweza kuyafuatilia katika mtandao mwenyezi mungu tunasema ni asante asante kwa kutenga mungu wetu kwa sababu uliona ya kwamba watoto wangu wanastahili kuwakumbusha ya kwamba siku za kurudi siku za kurudi kwangu simeweza kukaripia Tuna naona ya kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu mengi yanatendeka chini ya chua tunanyenyekea chini ya miku yako baba ili uweze kutukumbuka Mwenyezi Mungu tunapopitia macharibu hayo ukasema ya kwamba fumilieni mwana wangu maana siku ya kurudi kwangu ipo karibu tunakumbuka hata na wale ambao papa hawachiwezi inchi za nje na hata Kenya yetu nzima papa wese kuwaongoza tukiwaombea hata na yatima 
tukiwaombea ham hata wale ambao wanaisi nchaa mahali ambapo hawana chakula kuweze kuwaongoza hata na watoto wadogo Mwenyezi Mungu tunaweza kuona ya kwamba wengi wanakufa kwa hapa kwa ajili ya nchaa uweze kuwakumbuka Mwenyezi Mungu usiwaache utukumbuke kama watoto wako papa utukumbuke katika ufalme wako usituache Mungu wetu kwa ajili ya maombi ambao uliweza kutukumbusha ni kukumbuka pia ambao wachiwezi asante kwa kanisa pia papa ambao uliweza kuona ya kwamba ni fema tukuje chini ya miku yako kila na wakati tukinyenyekea hatuna kile ambacho tutaweza kukupa pale tunakushukuru kwa uhai ambao umetuwezesha hata kwa mwaka mzima tumeweza kuona mwaka mpya si kwa ajili ya nguvu yetu ni kwa ajili ya nguvu yako tunakushukuru tukisema ni asante kama kuna kiwango ambacho tulinena ama tulitenda kinyume na mapenzi yako papa utukumbatie na utusamee maana sisi ni watu ambao hatujaweza bila wewe Mungu utukumbuke usituache asante kwa mchungaji ambao uliweza kumwezesha Mwenyezi Mungu ili kuwashukulikia watu wako Mungu wetu nimeweza kumtumia kama chombo uweze kumwongoza na umlinde Mwenyezi Mungu maana wewe ni Mungu mkuu tunaomba papa ili uweze kutukumbuka usituache siku ya kurudi kwako hata na watoto wetu wanaporudi shule uweze kuwaongoza kila na mmoja wasingire na damu ya Yesu tukumbuke hata kwa sapato ya leo papa usituache utukumbuke kila na wako kati maana sisi ni watoto wako maombi yanapoendelea Our Father and our God in heaven we want to thank you for the opportunity to have 10 days of prayer and I want to bless your name this hour for having your children who thought and sat down to plan that we may worship you for 10 days and to be taught of your ways I want to bless your name father for those children that sat wherever they are father I want to bless your name for them that you may continue to nourish their minds and thoughts that they may continue to give us this good program oh god I bless your name for this church and I bless your name for the pastor that stood before your children for the 10 days even to worship you and to bring the powerful words that we may be closer to thee o oh my father this hour there are men and women and children that you touched this week and father you have led them and i pray that they may continue to stand with you thank you father because you are a good god this week you taught us that you are soon coming and the hour of judgment is here with us father i pray that you may forgive us that which will make us know to stand before thee and be counted as your children i pray lord that you may bring us closer to thee and forgive us our sins i bless your name father because your judgment is sure and it's coming i pray that you may forgive us and i want to thank you for the children that you gave us where we did not do well this week even to teach them your ways forgive us and i pray father that you may instill a spirit in them even as they go back to school i pray lord that you may walk with them and i pray for our young ones father that this message may not just pass them but father that you may instill them in their hearts even as they will be going away from their parents father i pray that this message may go with them and they may stick in their minds oh god that they may be led until you bring them safely back home here in this church and i bless your name father for this church new life you have given us leaders and i pray lord that the vision they have for this year may come to pass and i pray that you may fulfill them oh god i bless your name because you are a faithful god the journey has been long and where we are it is your hand continue leading us oh my father you have promised us that we'll have a church in this ground 
not a temporary temple that we have. But I pray in Jesus' name that the leaders that you have chosen, you will steal this one in their heart, that Father, they may stand for you on this ground, that they may do that which you want them to do on this ground. Put their heads together, my Father. I bless your name, and I thank you for all that you have done to us as a church. For we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. We magnify your name, your holy, awesome presence. We prostrate before you, Heavenly Father, because we know who you are. Thank you for the 10 days of prayer. Thank you for our hearts individually and corporately. I've been nourished and purified through your word. We pray now that your Holy Spirit may continue to grow this seed that you planted in our hearts that we may be transformed in the way we do worship with you that we may be transformed beginning from our individual commitment to you because you are the sana of our hearts and our minds are right before you and you know our thoughts even what we have been going through right now, the intention of our being here today, you know. Heavenly Father, we pray even now that because you understand our thoughts, our minds, and why we have come here, we pray that you may sanctify this place with the presence of your Holy Spirit. That Heavenly Father, you can have your way and access direct to the hearts of your people in challenging us to find communion with you. Dear Lord, thank you for the world church and the prayer requests that were put before you. Even before these prayer requests that were prearranged by the leadership of this church that you have called to be an agency to represent you here on earth, you authored these requests in their minds. And you gave them a discernment to see the need that we should pray for corporately as a church called of you and for your purposes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all those who involve themselves in lifting these prayer requests to you. And you have given us this commitment. Most of us who followed online have been blessed. Online meetings were all over the world during, during these 10 days of prayer. We pray that, Lord, you may answer to our prayer requests and the need for your church to be a missionary church in, the, in accomplishing the mission that you have assigned to us. We implore you that, dear Lord, you may shine your face upon us, that whatever we've been doing wrong in the past, and now that we are here beginning this new year, that you may sanctify our hearts, our minds, whatever we touch, that it may be blessed of you. We thank you for the plan this great church has in this city to build a sanctuary. As my brother has just intimated to you, I lift these plans before you, Holy Father, that you can bring them to come to pass and we may realize through their coordination, through your involvement in their plans, that dear Lord, this can be a reality and your name can be glorified even through this building. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our division. We thank you for the divisions of the world and particularly for our division, ECD. We know they have good plans from the leadership. We thank you for our union, the leadership. You have given them you have given them plans to do emphasis on mission. We pray for your empowerment and for your involvement in all these plans. That Heavenly Father, we may not be ashamed when we get involved, especially for the forthcoming net event that will be conducted by your servant, 
whom you have appointed, Mark Vinley. We pray for a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That, dear Lord, you can engage each one of us from today henceforth that we can focus on the mission you have given us that we, be, we may become partners with you in prayer and even in total involvement that we can do everything possible to do mission for you in these last days. We pray that when you come, when the work is done and completed, dear Lord, remember us in the kingdom for our faithfulness in responding to you in, be, in coming back to the altar of worship. We trust that your presence is here with us today and you have answered our prayer and we praise you for answering our prayers. We trust and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can go and get seated. We want to do a very brief and short summon it as we conclude our 10 days of prayer. Dear church members, dear viewers, we want to praise God for your life and for my life today. I want to give you a story that captured, captured my attention when I read it. And it is relevant to what I want to share with you today. A family had an anticipation to join up in a potluck of a, a particular family where they had been invited to join that potluck. Potluck, fellowship together, and um, join in enjoying together as we normally do. So this lady who was the mother of this particular family realized that her husband was feeling unwell and so they could not join with their children in that bad luck. A fellowship together, a get together to experience some celebration together, joyful moments to release some stressful situations of life as it were. Now, it was very unfortunate that he could, she could not join and uh, her with uh, her husband, they could not join the potluck venue where it was held. And they prepared their only son and the other one was young the other one was young the, young, the, the son was older who could be able to walk along with the rest of the people of the, the young people who were in the homestead and the other one was just on their laps could not be able to go along with them and there were two boys staying in the home so they were old enough so they were commit this young boy was committed to them that they should be able to go along with him to the particular potluck, potluck where they were to celebrate together. So as they went along, the big boys who were uh, relatives to this family, particular family, they forgot and went ahead, not realizing that the young boy strides are not big enough to catch up with their strides. So as they moved on, as they, 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 they went on trying to catch with the time when they were supposed to celebrate the potluck, they completely forgot that they were committed to take care of a young boy who was following them. However, the boy tried, he could not be able to, be, to catch up with. He cried, but it's like they could not hear because they were interested with the fellowship at the potluck. You know... We, we, we are parents here, and we know how careless some children are in taking care of their young ones. It's only after parents take charge to remind them constantly, even when you are in the home, in the, home, in the house, constantly reminding them, take care of the young ones. Do this for them. They don't care because they are thinking of their own 
way of doing things. And they, if, after all, they are not parents. But we need to train them to be caring to the young ones. So these boys went ahead and the boy could not see them any longer. And they decided because he knew where they were going. They were following a particular path way. And he said, if I pass through here, I'll be able to catch up with them on the other side. And so the boy decided to go through an unexplored avenue to be able to catch up with them because the straits were too, too, too long for him to catch up with. They were too fast. They had gone ahead of him. And his decision to do so landed him in a big problem, a serious problem. He landed into a cow shed where the animals which were kept in there were so fierce, fierce and they started chasing him. He ran seriously. He, he, the, the, the parents gave him the instructions. Take care of yourself. Do not dutify yourself because you need to be smart in the boat luck and come back here smart. So the instructions were given to the boy and to the big boys. Of course, the big boys had no problem because they didn't know how to take care of themselves. It's the young boys who need to be instructed. And now when he went into the cow shed where the animals were enclosed, he found himself in danger. But the intention was good. He wanted to help himself secure an opportunity to be able to catch up with the boys who had forgotten and went ahead. And now... This boy, unfortunately, was caught up in an enclosure where he could not escape. And he tried to help himself, struggled over the barbed wires to help himself because the animals were fierce and they were enclosed. Ultimately, he managed to jump over the barbed wire, but he tore, his, his clothes were torn. His clothes were torn and badly torn. He was ashamed even if he caught up with the boys who had gone ahead of, ahead of him, he may not be able to be at peace and to have the joy of celebrating a potluck together. And now the boys also had realized that they were not at par with the instructions given of their um, aunt. The boys uh, lived in that home. And so they remembered that however fast we are moving, however um, and however fast we are moving in anticipation to share in the boat luck, because we are late, we have forgotten one requirement, the care of the young boy with whom we were given, we, uh, we, we were assigned by, the, by, by our aunt to take care of. It's nowhere to be seen. So they went back along the pathway to look for him. So when they came along the path to follow up with the young, young boy, they realized the young boy was nowhere to be seen because he had also st started to find his way of helping himself catch up with them. So while they went back, the young boy was stra st struggling in the forest after being, uh, uh, finding himself in a situation where he was fiercely chased by the animals and he escaped. So he was rethinking on what to do next because of Landing in such a kind of a situation that he didn't expect. And now, both of them were lost. And they were confused. Because both of them did not follow the instructions. And the boy followed the instructions of staying on board in the pathway which he knew that he, it was the only route going to the very specific place he could have been safe but he was now in the forest, confused, not knowing where to go. And the other boys came back. Both of them ultimately did not con co co I mean find, a, 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 find themselves at the potluck venue because they were confused because all of them did not follow the instructions, however difficult and challenging the situations were. You know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you all know young people get fearful when it comes to being left alone. And so he did, not, he did not have a problem because he felt that I'm alone. I want to help myself catch up with the boys so that I can be able to arrive in time in the venue. And the big boys also had good intentions to walk fast as, as, as far as their strength and their strides were allowing them, them to do. 
And so they were faithful to what they were doing until they found and realized that they had done a good work, but the work they, they were doing, all the, 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 the commitment to, the respons- to doing what they were supposed to do was not that faithfully executed because they had forgotten the responsibility they were given to do. And the young boy also forgot that he needed to stay right there so that he can even go back instead of doing what? Of going his own way. What am I giving this story? These boys, ultimately, they did not go to the potluck. They all found their way back home because it was late. The boy in the forest was struggling in his confusion and stress of having, been, uh, of having spoiled his clothes, which he was instructed not to. And he was thinking and crying in the forest. And the big boys were also stranded and frustrated and distressed. What could they tell the mother who had given them the instruction? Dear friends, we have been called to walk in the way the Lord has instructed us to. And that's why the 10 days of prayer encouragement was meant for every member to mind his own business, to know why he has been called and what he has been called to do. And the instructions are clear enough that the Lord has given us to follow anyone, however conspicuous, however insignificant you are, at your own disposal, you must be asking yourself a question, what have you been called to do? And in your Christian walk with the Lord, what is this thing that the Lord has whispered to you that you must do that you have not done? And if you are persistent in not doing what the Lord must have whispered to you to do, then your way and your Christian walk can end up into frustrations because the Lord has not left anything undone for you to have left the way, but it's because of your negligence and your, 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 at your, it's at your own volition that you have decided to wear your way, to go your way and do your own things. In the first day that we did our 10 days of prayer, we saw that God is always after his people. And all that is his interest to do in this realm here below, he is interested in every one of us, irrespective of your circumstances, irrespective of your situation in life. God's love is revealed to you equally the same way it is revealed to anyone else seated beside you. So God's love is expressed equally to all of us. And the moment we seek of his face at the altar of worship, it's when we know how much the Lord loves us and get to know the purposes for which he has called us in this church. There is a woman who has caught my attention in my Christian walk and mission. This woman is found in the book of John, chapter 4. I want us to meditate. We are not doing preaching today, but we want to meditate some, some particular points. I spoke of this very situation, I mean, this very text here over the week, but I want to emphasize on some verses here as we do a conclusion of these 10 days of prayer. Jesus was very strategic. He, follows, he followed the instructions he was given. He, he had a mission to accomplish. On Thursday, we, 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 we saw that the Lord has a purpose. And that purpose for us is equivalent to the love he has revealed to you. We are all different. We are all been called in different ways at different times. But the Lord is interested. Now that he has called you in the time he called you, you are old in this church, you are new in this church, but at least you have responded to his love. What is this? 
one thing that the Lord demands of you to accomplish as a reason for having responded to his love. That is why we are being persuaded during these 10 days of prayer to come back to the altar that we may have the fullness of understanding on what we must do in our calling in this church. So this woman, the Samaritan woman, Jesus strategically positioned himself that he can be able to meet the needs of this lady. Just as he is positioned even today to whisper to you, to speak to you something. In every worship service, the Lord has something to encourage you. Beef up your faith. Strengthen your, your, your muscles so that you can accomplish the purpose of your response towards his love. In the book of John chapter 4, verses 1. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than, than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. So Jesus was changing position. He was doing mission, but there was a conflict by the Pharisees against this mission. And so he said, the fields are ripe, but the, uh, the, the, the reapers are few. He knew that the world was committed to him, that he can go out and do the Lord's business which he had assigned him. So any, any kind of hindrance, any kind of obstacle did not stop him. He had to pray and seek opportunity elsewhere. So he sought opportunity to go to Galilee so that he can continue with the ministry. In this place where he met this woman, the Bible says, but when he was retiring to Galilee to do ministry, it dawned on him because he knew the purpose and the reason for him to have come. He retired he went through Samaria. The Bible says that he needed to go through Samaria. That, that, that is a serious uh, 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 thing to highlight. That he needed to go through Samaria. He was hungry. He was tired. He had been worn down by the conspiracy of the Pharisees who were against his mission. But he says, nevertheless, I must go through Samaria. Why must he go through Samaria? Because he had one woman whom she wanted to meet and save. So, God's interest is that personal to you. God's concern is that deliberate to you and me. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we have become. How deplorable a condition we have plunged, allowed to plunge in, to, to enter into. The Lord says that he needs to have you come on board with him and in agreement with what you must live to accomplish in this life. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sanka. That story goes, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from the journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. The disciples had already gone to look for food. And uh, when they went to look for food, it seemed from the outlook that Jesus was so tired and being their leader, he needed the rest. And so they went to fetch for food. For them, they could not bear. But Jesus had food enough to eat in fulfilling the purpose that the Lord had sent him to accomplish. So he, he, he sat there at Jacob's well. When the woman came, there were, there were exchange, which you already know. Give me water, a drink. And the, the woman was contending. Uh, we do not share. There were discrepancies. There were differences existing between Samaria and Judah. 
In this place where Jesus sat, one thing that we need to highlight and remember, in this place that Jesus sat, it was a place called Sekem. Sekem is a very significant place for the Jewish nation. When God called Abraham, it is in this place that he erected the first altar of worship. It is in this place, this place is between Mount Ebal and Mount Samaria. It's in between, it's an entrance into, uh, that was going through these mountains, these two mountains. It was a very special place because when God called Abraham, this is a place called Canaan. It's an, when he came to Canaan, this is the place he erected the first altar. So when Jesus comes and also sits there at a well that was dark by his uh, ancestors, he, he meant something. The center of worship, a center of mission orientation. Any mission must begin with worship. Any mission orientation, any kind of involvement in God's work, or else we could be doing our own, our own business. So Jesus knew that this is the place, uh, an altar of prayer. I must pause here. Even when I'm hungry and tired and weary, I must pause here for the uh, renewed strength for me to accomplish the purpose of my mission down here. So when this woman is coming, she never knew anything about this history, but Jesus knew about this history. So when Jesus knew about the way, ways and the life of this young lady, she did not know that there's someone out there who through the true worship and the real altar was revealing the secrets of this lady. There is no way, by the way, prayer warriors, you can agree with me, that you can pray and the Lord reveals to you some dangers for the day ahead of you. You can, when you, when you surrender at the altar of prayer, like the prayer you are conducting today, all night vigil prayer, the Lord will shed his blessing of revelations to you as a church and will show you great things that are wait for you even as you commit yourself to prayer. So Jesus said, I must be reignited in strength for me to continue ministry. They went to seek for food. Jesus paused here to commune with God and to be reignited in strength for him to continue the assignment of mission. So when this woman was coming to the river, conducting her normal life, she thought she was doing life away a natural way of doing it, the way she used every day, because you know the, the, the way of this, the ways of this woman were, were, were the ways that were not right before the community. And so she could not come outright to fetch water during the time when she was supposed to. And so she hid herself coming to the river when the rest of the people are not able to see her because the law was, if you are seen and you are an adulterer, you will be stoned. So she hid herself in circumstances that are, are, were un, unfavorable. She was burnt by the sun and she went through the sunburns. I told you last week that in the, in the eastern part of this world, there are people are always burnt with sunburns on their faces because of the heat, the severe heat that existed there. So this woman thrived through this condition because she knew who she was and she never wanted to die. No one here, however sinful, however depraved you are, could want to die. You want always to secure your life. But I want to challenge you. How are you securing your life at the expense of seeking safety and security of your life. The real security and safety is found at the altar back to Jesus who has called us to fellowship with him. So this woman said, let me do my normal life. When she came, Jesus asked her for water and said, give me water. And she said, no, we don't, 
we have the differences. You understand, it's okay. Now, woman, if you knew the man who was interacting with you and where you could have done something and they could have given you living water and you could have been satisfied from the thirst that is causing you to go through the difficult sun, sunburns and the difficult circumstances to come and fetch the water. The woman said, you, you don't have the water. You are just a, 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 a man from, 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 from the other side and we, we, we don't have fellowship with you. You cannot help me anything. Now she said, woman, I'm gonna give you living water. So please, can you do something? Which you don't have something to fetch water with. Those are the conversations with Jesus at the altar of Sekem. How dare you say that you can help me secure living water? For her, she thought that living water is the piped water, pipe, piped water that could be uh, given, I mean, uh, an opportunity to get pipe, piped water to her home so that she could not be able to come out and remain in her house doing whatever she wanted to do. But Jesus meant a different kind of, a, uh, of, a, of living water. It's the satisfaction from the burdens of her challenges that she had. And when this woman argued with Jesus for a little while, then the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. Verse 15. I want to read. What's the key verse? Give me this water. The woman said to him, Give me this water and I may, that I may not thirst. The word may, that I may not thirst, she did not really believe that she cannot thirst. May is a conditional thing. Let me have this access to this kind of a water that if I drink it, I may not thirst. Nor come here again to draw. You know, the problem was the thirst, which she wanted to satisfy by coming through the strenuous conditions. But now coming was a problem because she came at a time when she was not expected to come and she was suffering through all through in this time that she was not meant to come. The sun was too hot. It was on the, uh, uh, on the, on, on the, at the, at the, um, on top of the, of the, of our head. And when the sun is at the, uh, on top of, uh, uh, the middle, uh, on top of us, of the head, it's really hot. It burns hot. And so she said, give me so that I may not come suffering this way. Now, when this woman said, Jesus said, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Was it true that this woman didn't have a husband? Was it true that this woman really had no husband? She had several of them. The story goes down that she had several of them and the one that she was hiding, that she doesn't have a husband, was the sixth one. And she was not able to disclose. And there was something common with this woman. Uh, husbands, which she didn't want them disclosed. She was promiscuous, she was an adulterer, and she really wanted to hide this secret from being disclosed to the people, and that is why she was insisting on keeping these secrets. And Jesus said, yes, you have said the truth. You do not have a really husband, and that is true. But now, even the you have several of them, but even this one you have, you have kept in the house, the sixth one. And when the woman could count this, whim, this, this, uh, this kind of um, uh, husbands that she had had before, he, she could for sure see that someone out there knows the secrets of her life. And now when she went home, she was convinced to tell the entire world at home that come and see a particular man who told me some secrets that I hid within myself that I could not be able to disclose, that I was not willing to disclose. But he has opened them to me in my hearing. And for sure, those secrets are true to the letter. I want to challenge you, church members, We've been going through several topics of the 10 days of prayer. But this is the point here I want to leave you with. That God knows who you are. That God understands your very predicament in which 
you are in right now. Sickness, yes, he understands. Even before you said, God help me, he knows that you are sick. And you must be sick as you are sick. And you should be content with the sickness that you are in and thank God for that situation. Because it's, after all, you may have contributed, but God that doesn't care. He can save you if you are content and tell him, God, thank you for allowing this to happen. So this woman was not uh, ready to accept. And uh, when Jesus whispered to him and persuaded of him from the known to the unknown, she was able to go out on mission with one mission agenda. She went revealing the secret of a man, the kind of a man who revealed these secrets to her and to, that, come see a man. Young, young, our young people, in your promiscuity, in your waywardness, could you hear this voice calling you even when you are in that secret place and you call that young boy, call that young man, come see a man who can save us from this kind of a life? You know, it's, it's very, it's very mind challenging that even in your sinfulness you can recognize that someone out there knows you sees you and cares for you and he has not given up with you that is how kind our loving god is when he creates in you a longing a desire to restore you back to the altar his intention is to Plant a seed that will germinate in helping you be sensitive to godly things. That is his intention. That's why he came to the land of Sechem. So that he can, he can bridge the gap between the Samaritans and the people from Judah. So that he can teach them that unity of purpose is what we have been called to pursue our mission. You know there are people who have been called with one purpose, with one mission, with one agenda, seated in the same auditorium, same church, but they are divided. We must return to the altar for the Lord to use us in mission. It's from our meeting with the Lord at the altar of fellowship with him that we can be sent of him to execute the assignment he has given us. Yes, we could be doing assignments, I know. But the Lord is insisting on this aspect that you need to reevaluate your involvement in this mission. During these 10 days of prayer, we saw Elijah challenging the false prophets. There are many false prophets and God's faithful people are there as well. He was alone and he challenged them until they could give up and say, let us join up with you. The prophets were converted. So you can be a single person and the Lord can use you when he has restored you back to the altar. The church can be so insignificant in its way, in its outlook. We can be that small a congregation in this world, but the Lord has given his promise that the moment we begin with him, he will reignite us in our hearts with a fire that will burn the entire world. So this woman had the metas and the strength to go tell the husband in the room who was waiting to be, to, to be served with food on the table and she remained secluded in that house for the days they had agreed. But the woman could change attitude and say, now, stop about all this business. Come see a man who has told me all the secrets, including the secret of your being here. What more do you need in church fellowships other than seeking for this one thing, that the Lord restores your soul in communion with him so that you can be accepted of him in your service? The Bible says, I mean, the spirit of prophecy says in the Acts of the Apostles, page 9, that the church is God's urgent 
for mission. This church has been not been has not been uh, uh, is not existing for any other reason other than mission. How much are you involved in this mission? And what is this thing that is prohibiting you, that is stopping you, that is consistently between your savior and your soul, that is stopping you from involving yourself in the mission? That thing, that stubbornness, that kind of a pride, that sort of excuses you give in involving yourself with the Lord, it is that which resembles all the burdens this woman had. Men and women are not faithful in giving tithes and offerings for the mission of God's work. God has called you for that very purpose. He has not called you in vain. But you excuse yourself several times. Many times you say school fees. I was challenging people that uh, and the elders has, has, has called the parents and we have stood up. We have been prayed for so that the Lord can take care of our young people when they go out there to, to study in their various institutions, schools and high schools, primary schools, universities. And we are so proud and feel comfortable that the Lord has had our prayer. And we, we should, of course, have this faith that the Lord will take care of these young people. But how faithful are you between school fees and returning time? Back to the altar reminds you as much as you are committed to paying school fees, and many of you have already paid. You paid a long time ago because you are, want to avoid the congestion, isn't it? But, but how committed are you in returning that which belongs to the Lord? Return all the tithes and offerings in the storehouse that there may be food Translate this term food, that, there be, that, that, that the mission of God may continue with what he has blessed you with. Because God does not work in a vacuum. He works with the people he has called to use them in the mission, which is the mandate of this church. Which is the reason why, why you are seated here. So this morning, I want to... Read verse 23 and 24. Verse from verse 21. Woman said, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where we worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, the hour is coming. The hour meant Jesus himself when you will neither on this mountain nor on the mountain on Jerusalem worship the Father. Jesus neither approves his ancestral belief nor consents to the belief of the woman. But he says, I'm the real altar of worship. So for those who are perturbed and disturbed about which religion to follow, Jesus is the answer for the world today. The world today does not need sects to follow. That's why we are being instructed and guided to meet with the honor of the altar who is Jesus Christ. The world does not need where you belong structurally in terms of church yes there are people who have been called in fact even as we are seated here not all of us have been genuinely called but the lord is working on us to give us a restoration as he's doing this week so that we can join hands with him in serving him faithfully there is no one who has done perfectly as the lord as the lord expects us to but we are growing. We are being nurtured to grow in beginning with him at the altar. That the Lord can empower us to finish his work. So this woman is a real example of a conversion for mission. Verse 23, Jesus says, the hour is coming. And now is woman 
when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then this woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming. Could you be the one? Did you know there are people who are in charge, but they have never had a glimpse of who has called them and who is this they are serving? So as this woman was coming to a realization of who is this man who was conversing with him, he, he, he was... He was trying to see clearly, could you be the Messiah? And indeed, Jesus was. Jesus said to her, who I who speak to you, I am he. That is a very personal revelation. That the story of this woman was known by this Messiah. To this woman, it was a miracle that Someone who could be knowing my story, could he be the Messiah who was promised to give security and ultimately save this generation of Israel? Then Jesus, when Jesus said, I who is speaking to you is the Messiah. So this woman could be having a, a very oblique understanding of who was the Messiah. And yet, she was in our waywardness. I want to challenge you church members we could be knowing the Ten Commandments, Sabbath commandment. We could be coming to church every Sabbath. But my challenge this afternoon is that the Lord is calling us back to the altar. That we can seek his face and find him when he is available now in the realms of the heavenly sanctuary waiting upon us. The book of Second Peter chapter uh, 4 verse 17 we read that judgment has begun judgment has already begun and it began long way back in 1844 when Jesus entered into the holy of holies beginning an investigative judgment revealing the secrets of God's people in his church and how they are lived in assumption in serving the Lord but in reality, they have not caught the real vision of serving their master and savior, Jesus Christ. Could you, be re could, you, could, could you be the Messiah? Many people are living in, 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 in a situation of uh, having no clarity who has called them. And what they are doing out there in a particular church. But the Lord is saying, until this is revealed... Until he converses with you at the altar of fellowship and you willingly accept to respond, you may not even know that who is this Jesus in your life. You may not even know who is this Jesus that you serve you, 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 you are, and you are worshipping, how, how meaningful he can transform your life and change your situation in an instant. It's my prayer this morning, this afternoon, sorry. That the Lord may help us to see that for sure we are serving a living God. And he stands in the heavenly realms of the heavenly courts, the most holy place, seated at the throne of the Father, pleading with you. As he sat at the altar of Sechem, so he is seated in the very presence of his father, of whom the altars were representing, persuading you to come home. You have wandered far away. God is still, even now, because he knows the secrets of your life, dealing with your situation and trying to influence you to come and do genuine fellowship with him. Then only we can be of use in his service as we do mission for him. I want you to read the book of Isaiah chapter 26. It's a conclusion, verse 3. I want you to read, Elder, 26, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You read.
You, you read. Why, why don't you read? Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The Lord has promised to keep those who respond to his calling into our respective lives in perfect peace if we keep on trusting in him and seeking to know of his secrets why he has called us and seeking to sit at his feet to rediscover our life and the calling he has given us individually. It's my prayer in Jesus' name.